Welcome to the More Than Fitness Podcast. And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to mini-sode number 122 or 123. The last mini-sode was a replay, so I don't know exactly how to figure that out, uh, the order there. Um, But happy to be back and today's topic. We are going to be discussing transitioning from tracking macros to intuitive eating. And now since this is a mini-sode, you guys know it's not going to be super extensive. Uh, And and so this topic can get very nuanced and it can be very contextual to the individual. So everything I'm saying here is mostly um, generalizations uh, for most people. I have helped I have successfully helped a few of my clients go through this transition. I have kind of gone through this transition myself. And so I'm just going to give you guys a couple of the best practices that has helped me and has helped them. Uh, and I think the two types of people that will benefit benefit most from this, some of them are going to, some of you watching this right now are people who maybe are almost afraid to stop tracking macros, right? Because it gives you a sense of security and and safety and certainty, right? That is, that is comforting. Uh, And so the idea of kind of more uncertainty of moving from tracking macros to intuitive eating can be a little bit scary. Uh, So that'll be one of the groups. Then the other groups, the other groups, good word. Uh, the other group will be people who are simply, uh, you know, just trying to transition from tracking macros to intuitive eating, um, just on a more convenient, uh, spectrum. If that makes any sense at all. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into things. Uh, I'm going to start kind of with the, the most extreme and then go towards the least extreme, kind of like this timeline here. And so the, the first thing that, that I'm assuming most of you guys are doing are actually tracking macros. So you're tracking everything. You're tracking calories per day. You're tracking um, uh, macros per day. So proteins, carbs, fats, and who knows, maybe, maybe other things as well. Maybe you have a, a set meal schedule as far as the times that you eat, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And so the, the next thing that you would go to from there, uh, and so this timeline is going to be, or the way that you do this, right. The way that you progress with anything for the most part, as far as behavior change goes, is it's going to be more of a, a piecewise, um, change, right. Instead of just snapping your fingers and you go from tracking everything to just tracking calories and protein, for example. This is the same thing with with dieting, right? It's not just an on or off switch. I think what people typically think about with failure from diet is let's say let's say normally they can stay on their diet Monday through Thursday every single week. That's when they can stay on their diet. Okay? Whenever Friday hits, then let's say Friday, Saturday and Sunday, they go quote unquote off their diet. And so next week they say, okay, I'm going to try and get all seven days perfectly of I'm going to diet for seven days in a row. Well, then they, they diet Monday through Thursday, and then they also diet on Friday, right? So they hit their calories, their numbers, whatever their goals on Friday, and then they fail quote unquote on Saturday. Uh, and so then they feel like the entire week is a failure, but actually they've made progress from the week prior, right? Because originally they could only do Monday through Thursday. And then this week they did Monday through Friday. So it's like, even though they didn't reach their initial goal of, of seven days in a row, it's like, that's still progression. And so I think I want you to think about this, uh, anything with behavior change, but especially this of going in a piecewise function. And just because you say, okay, I'm transitioning from tracking macros to intuitive eating, uh, just because you maybe fall back into your own ways, doesn't necessarily mean that you failed. What I w- what I would say is, I think it's the distance between failures, and and tracking that and figuring out what did I do last week and how did I improve on that this week. Even if it's just one more meal on track, maybe on Fridays you normally have a certain meal out with people or something like that, and you actually want to rein that in and have a salad instead of that that cheeseburger or something. It's like that should still be considered a win, and so. That's just one caveat I wanted to to make with this, that, that progress isn't just going from one thing to the next overnight. It's, it's more of this, this uh, piecewise and, and stepwise function over time. Okay, so 
back to the timeline, you're tracking everything, all calories, all macros. Uh, and then the next step would be tracking just calories and protein and letting fats and carbs kind of be where they may, they can kind of fall wherever they want. But as long as you're still tracking protein and calories, you're good to go. And to use the example I just mentioned, let's say you track everything, calories, uh, proteins, carbs, and fats uh, for four days of the week. And then three days of the week, you track just calories and protein. You see how you can, you can make this progression as big or as small as you want. You can go from tracking everything to just tracking calories and protein, or you can do half the week one way and then half the week the other. And as long as it's in the direction that you're trying to head, uh, and it's, it's, it's quote unquote better than what you did last week, well, then you're making progress. Okay. So, so tracking just calories and protein. And then after that, after you can do that comfortably and you, you feel okay doing that and you're, you're doing that, let's say 80% of the time. Um, well then after that, you can probably move on to tracking just calories for the day, uh, and just having protein at every single meal. Right. So those two things. Oh, and I also meant to mention again, the, the, the spectrum that this can fall on can be huge. There's so many different things that you can do with this. Whenever I say tracking calories, there can be a big difference in saying, okay, I'm going to eat 1500 calories per day. And then there's a big difference between just trying to hit that one target and then broadening that target to more of a range. So then you say, okay, I'm trying to hit 1400 to 1600 calories per day. That's going to give you a little bit more wiggle room than, okay, I need to hit 1500 calories and you want to be within, you know, whatever 50 calories, either way, you can make that range larger. And that's another way of kind of making that transition slowly over time. And, and so with, with this one, so you go from tracking everything, tracking just protein and calories, and then you can move down to tracking just calories, uh, in a range, and then also having protein at every meal. And the same thing with protein, you can switch from, okay, I need to make sure I hit 165 grams of protein every single day to a range of 150 to 175 grams of protein per day, or you can even just have a minimum. Okay. I want to have at least 150 grams of protein every single day. Right. And then if you want to get away from tracking the protein, then you just make sure you have protein at every single meal. Well, then for the most part, you're probably going to be still hitting your protein regularly. It's not going to be perfect, but that's kind of the idea of what you're doing is to kind of be okay with good enough. And, and that can, that can be hard for some people, but that's the, the practice. It's slowly getting out of your comfort zone over time. And I think that's what you have to do. You slowly have to take away these little security blankets or things that you find comfort in uh, and, and slowly go out of your comfort zone um, so that eventually it becomes your new reality, right? Okay, so after tracking just calories and having protein at every meal, you can simply track your first two meals. So you can track your calories for the first two meals of the day. Let's say you have breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Uh, track the first two meals and then letting dinner just kind of be up in the air. You can have a little bit more variety where beforehand maybe uh, you were having the same dinner every single night. You were trying to be super consistent with, with breakfast, lunch, and dinner and just eating mostly the same things every single day. Well, now I would say keep those same first two meals and then with dinner, go out of your comfort zone a little bit by having more variety, throw in more, um, unknown meals kind of. And so whenever I say unknown meals, I mean, ones that are like casseroles or stews or, um, like meatloaf, right. Or, or some, some type of mixed variation of food. That's going to be hard for a, uh, veteran tracker to just kind of guesstimate the, the, the proteins, carbs, and fats whenever they look down at their plate. This can be, this can be tough. And, and some people listening to this may be like, this is, you know, this is way too extreme for me. Like I'm not thinking about it that way, but other people, are having aha moments right now because uh, I may have spoke to something that they've never heard anyone else really say before uh, about having fear around these foods that they don't know the calories or the macros to exactly. So that can cause them a little bit of anxiety. So same thing could be said with, with going out to eat. Maybe you go out to eat and you don't necessarily look at the calories or anything like that, right? That's going out of your comfort zone. That's kind of what I'm talking about here. Uh, and then after that, 
the next step would be to make sure that you're really focusing on hunger and eating to fullness instead of to your typical meal schedule. So now let's, let's say, um, for the most part, you're not tracking hardly anything as far as food goes, uh, as far as like weighing stuff on the scale, you can still be guesstimating and things like that. But now I want to make sure that your, your, whenever you eat throughout the day, isn't simply because it's the time of day that you always eat, right? So it's like, oh, it's 12 p.m. I always have meal number two at 12 p.m. every single day. Even though maybe you're not as hungry or you could wait a little bit longer to have your food. And of course, time constraints for some people makes this a little bit less feasible. Uh, but the whole point of this, of transitioning over, is to really start to listen to your internal cues of hunger and satiety a little bit more instead of letting okay, how many calories do I have left for the day? How many macros do I have left for the day? How many macros does this meal have and this meal have? And, and trying to piece those together. And instead it's like, okay, uh, uh, you, you wake up and then you let your natural hunger guide you throughout the day. Because some people will wake up, uh, uh, and again, this can be, get very nuanced. Some people wake up, not have any food, and then... Um, uh, but still because it's, it's morning time and they're, they're kind of forcing themselves to eat because they know that's the time they normally have breakfast. And then they normally have lunch at this time and dinner at this time. Instead, we're going to let hunger kind of guide things throughout this process. The, the other extreme of that would be kind of like intermittent fasting people who wake up and sure, maybe they're not hungry within the first hour or two, but then they do start getting hungry, but just because they're fast, it doesn't end for another hour or so they kind of force themselves to be hungry. That's kind of the, the, the opposite of what we're trying to do here. It's basically just like go along your natural rhythms of hunger and satiety throughout the day and really listen to those and, and uh, intuitive eating people call honoring those, right? Uh, and I think that that's, that's important and, and making sure that uh, I, I think you can, and then still making sure throughout the day that each meal is balanced. So using, since you've tracked macros, you know what a, a plate should typically look like as far as having a balanced protein, carbs, and fats for the most part, making sure it's, it's pretty heavy on protein, having a balanced mix of, of carbs and fats, uh, and then also making sure that you have some fiber in there as well, some type of vegetable, fruit, uh, whole grain, et cetera, et cetera. And then I think having, if you're at this state, you're in pretty good shape, but then I think you want to also make sure that you're using some type of, of, um, at least to ease your mind a little bit, tracking something in terms of body weight or measurements or, or pictures or, or using even just like a normal belt or something like that. Uh, having something to keep things kind of like reined in without it letting, without it dictating how you eat throughout the day. And what I mean by this is, let's say you ate out the night before, you wake up heavier. And so you kind of quote unquote, convince yourself throughout the day that you're not that hungry, even though you are, but you're purposefully trying to eat less because you're trying to compensate for the day before, right? So this is with this whole thing, again, you're honoring your hunger and your satiety cues. And even if you did wake up heavier or something like that, you're still not going to let that affect how you eat throughout the rest of the day, right? I think that's, that's key. And so from this point, this is the last thing you're listening to your internal hunger and satiety cues. You've successfully been able to maintain your weight for the most part without much tracking. Uh, and you can maybe even give up the scale altogether, right? So now you're just kind of maintaining living a healthy lifestyle without too much worry either way. Uh, I think you can either continue doing this or you can take a more daily habit based approach, uh, and just have a few things important to you that allow you to optimally, uh, function throughout the day and live a healthy lifestyle and feel good uh, and, and make sure that you can um, have these certain goals that you want to hit each day that make you feel good uh, and, and having some type of tracking going on just keeps you accountable to making sure that you're doing this day in and day out. And so these are just daily habits of, you know, three or four servings of vegetables each day, uh, getting in some type of movement, getting protein with every meal, right? These daily process goals that don't really have much outcome attached to them. I think that's kind of a happy middle ground between the extreme of tracking everything and then absolutely tracking nothing. So I think it's using those internal cues and then also reflecting like, okay, what makes me feel good and what doesn't make me feel good? And then doing more of the things that feel good and less of the things that make you feel bad.
So again, had to kind of rush through that, but I hope that helped go back, listen through it again, take notes if you want to. Um, but that is it for Minisode number 122, transitioning from tracking macros to intuitive eating. If you have any questions, please drop them below. Thanks as always for listening and watching. See ya.